guys, the recipe will be underneath in the comments. Please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Hey guys, this is me today. I am going to do a quick video, a fairly quick video on what to do with all the squash. Oh my gosh, as a small gardener, um, we plant, we planted more squash this year than we need because our pigs can eat what we don't eat and things like that. But of course, when it starts coming in, you're so excited to see that first bloom and that first plant and that first vegetable. And they're so good. I mean, we love squash stewed with onion. We love it fried. Um, we love squash pie, which was my, um, great granny Effie's recipe. We love squash anyway. Um, but there comes a point in time that you have so many squash, you do not know what to do with them. So you give them, you give some away. My dad is a firm believer. They grow a huge garden. Him and my mom have said for years that it's God's garden and they share with everybody. Them with Carson this week, I think pulled and helped shuck and silk most of about 700 ears of corn for other people. We are happy to share some of what we have left over. Um, and I have given some away to different people, but we still have some and I'll continue to give it away. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I do with some of my squash. We have lots of different kinds of squash too. This is one of my favorite. This is a cupcake squash. It's just not shaped exactly like a cupcake, but that's kind of what it looks like. And then of course we just have regular like crook neck squash, have some straight neck squash. One of my favorites is a scallop squash. I also have a bright yellow scallop squash, which is just so cute, but I don't have any of those here right now. This was out of a different thing called a zucchini ball blend. I had one of these the other day that was yellow with a little bit of green on top. So it's really a zucchini, but it's called a zucchini ball blend and they kind of form in different colors on that particular plant. And then this has been one of my favorites this year. This is a golden egg squash. So it is kind of shaped like an egg. Um, and so these are perfect to scrub off and then slice across for, for frying. So I'm going to save that one um, for that. And then of course I've just got some zucchini squash too that are that are green. So two of the things that we're going to talk about today, I tried cutting up and battering and then freezing some sliced squash to then put in a put in oil and fry later. They were very good, not probably as good as fresh out of the garden, breaded and fried right then, but they were good. And I can't imagine them lasting all year in the freezer like that, even if you put them in freezer bags. But for several months, even after the summer season is gone and after squash season is over, perfect to lay them out, drop a few um, in some oil and, and fry those. We don't fry a lot of stuff, but some fried okra and some fried squash, absolute necessity in the summertime for, these southern, for this Southern family. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna do is squash relish. This is a sweet squash relish. I, my mom has told me that it was good. So I had all these squash the other day made some it was fantastic i did one batch i'm going to do another show you how to get a batch of that together today and i'm going to show you how i do my frozen squash come along with me and let's see what we can do with some of these squash they're about running out of my ears so we'll do what we can with them i'll give some more away probably tomorrow um and then there's tons of bloom and tons of little baby squash out there so we'll have more even later this week so for your ingredients you need 10 cups of shredded summer squash two large onions chopped a large green pepper chopped six tablespoons of canning salt, four cups of sugar, three cups of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of each celery seed, ground mustard, and ground turmeric, half teaspoon of nutmeg, and half teaspoon of pepper. And that's it. So, so what I'm looking for is about 10 cups of shredded squash. It makes such a difference in the way this relish looks in the jar. I have washed and scrubbed all my squash. I'm going to pick, I'll probably save some of the crook neck and like this one for the like frozen squash later, but we'll see what all I use. Um, or need to use out of this bowl to get to 10 cups. So we'll gradually put that in there. Once we get to 10 cups, there's some onion and some pepper that we have to chop these too. And my bell peppers are smaller. So I have some purple bell peppers and a green one that I pulled out of my garden this afternoon. So we'll wash and scrub those. And I'm gonna use those instead of one large bell pepper. Probably use two of those peppers. One I'll probably save for something else. So super duper easy. But the first thing we're gonna do is these 10 cups of shredded squash. We got our onions, peppers, and squash all chopped up. Six tablespoons of canning salt. You're gonna cover this up with water, put a lid on it, put it in the refrigerator, and leave it for several hours. Then we'll come back to it. Okay, so here we've got a Dutch oven. You 
You've got to add your sugar, vinegar, and your seasonings. Get ready for the squash. They've been draining for a while. So it's four cups of sugar. I know it seems like a ton, but it's okay. Everything in moderation. It's three cups of vinegar. See, I've got my pot of water on the back too that's boiling. So that's gonna be because the jars are already clean, but then we're getting ready to put the hot stuff in the jars, then we'll um, we'll dip the jars in the water, let them heat up, and then set them off. So you're putting a hot substance in a hot jar. And then we've got um, one tablespoon each of celery seed, ground mustard, and turmeric. And that's what we're doing now. So we've got all this going, we're gonna let it come to a, a, a boil and then we're gonna add our drained squash, like shredded squash and all that stuff, and peppers and onions that's been soaking in the in the fridge um, overnight. And we'll get that, bring it back to a boil, simmer it, and then this thing will be ready for jars. So we got this that's come to a boil and now we are going to put our squash in there. You can even see I drained this for a couple of nights, but even still like more water will come out of there. I'm gonna just scoop it in there instead of putting all this extra water in there. So now you're gonna leave it just like so, and you are gonna bring it back to a bowl on high, and then you can turn it down to kind of a low, a low temperature, and then we're gonna simmer it for about 15 minutes, and then it'll be ready for your jars. So I'm gonna let it simmer probably about 10 minutes, and then I'll get my jars heated up in this hot water back here. That way they're all hot together. So I've just put my jars in here just to heat them up. They are already clean. So we're gonna put them here. And just put them in. You just leave them in for a few minutes, just long enough to get hot because your squash relish is hot. So, so as you're getting ready to ladle this up, we're gonna go ahead and take our lids. I'm just gonna put ten in here. You can always add more. This is um, to seal the jars. You just have to warm them up. So I kind of put them on low, or I'll bring them to a bowl and then turn them down to simmer. So six, seven, eight. There's twelve in a box. So I'm just gonna scoop up some of my relish. I've got this wonderful little funnel that's great for canning. You want to leave a little bit of a gap. So this is about a half an inch. It's probably close. So now you're going to take your paper towel. I usually wet a little piece and then have a little bit of dry piece on it. So you got to, I put my finger in there. And then you're going to wipe around the edges. You got to make sure you get all the sticky and all the, any little bit of food that, that was on there off. Now, now that we've got those all wiped off, take your magnet, lid picker up there, pick it up, turn it off, put it right on top, and you should just snug. You're not trying to get it super tight, um, just snug and closed. So you can do this with all of them, and then we're going to get ready for the hot water bath. My water's not quite ready in my hot water bath, so I'm going to give it a few more minutes, let it start boiling, and then I'll show you how to put those in there. All right, so now I'm taking this. This is hot. It was boiling a second ago with the lid on it. So I'm going to go ahead and start spacing my jars apart. All right, so you're going to lower it down. You want to make sure that your water is over the top of your lids. If it's not, you're going to have to add some more water. Then I put this on there. It's already boiling a little bit, so I'm going to set that on there. Once it's hard boiling like that under the lid, if you peek, set your timer for 15 minutes. You're going to boil it in the canner for 15 minutes, and then you're almost all done. Okay, so 15 minute timer went off, super hot. I'm gonna open it away from you so you don't get yourself a facial stain. Set this up on there. So I get a dry towel and I've got my jar, things to pick up. Uh, ladle the um, water, hot water off top. And then we're gonna set them on a hot, on a, just a dry towel, just over. So I'm gonna transfer all those over and then Colin's gonna flip around and watch you, see if you can hear some of the ones Pop. So once they pop, that means that they're sealed. You let them cool off till they're completely cool. You label the top of them. I usually put the year and what it is on there. And you're all done. All right. So we're gonna watch. So one's already popped. Oh, there's another one. It's it was this one. That what one. what do I call the popping sound? Tone? What do Granny always call? Uh, okay. When they start popping, 
This is also what me and my mom like to refer to as the sound of success. Okay, so now that we've learned all about doing squash relish and how fabulous it is, and you can't wait to get you some grilled hot dogs this afternoon, um, I am gonna show you what we do with some of the rest of our squash. And so here I've got, I've taken a bunch of our squash and I have, um, have cut them up. I don't peel the ones that I do brown. The ones that you can cut up like fries, um, like um, the one that I think this is a zucchini, but there's some other squash that you just may wanna cut up like fries. My dad doesn't want so they're fantastic. Um, but the circles I don't, I don't peel. But anyway, so you have lots of different ways that you can do this. So here I've got, I put three eggs and probably about a cup of milk or so. And then here I've got some, this is a beer batter, like seafood batter mix. Now you can use, there's a fish fry, there's a chicken fry, there's whatever season you really like in your fried squash you can do. This is just one that I, I picked up. Um, and so we're gonna use it today. So I have got this little handy dandy thing that's a little batter. You don't have to have this, you can use just a regular bowl. But so I just take my squash dip them in the egg milk mixture and I'll just kind of chunk them in there so they're done on both sides. Make sure they're wet everywhere. You want to try to let some of that drip off as much as you can. Just chunk them in. You don't want to overload it. You don't want to put them all in there because then they won't find it get all battered. So here I'm just going to put that back down. You can put it in here. And then you can just shake those around, flip it over, and then when you take this lid off, they're already kind of kind of battered there, so you don't have to worry about that. So here, I've already got a cookie sheet ready. You see my counter where we're doing lots of canning and stuff today. So there, I'm going to put them on just a cookie sheet. It does not matter if they touch necessarily. I probably wouldn't overlap them a whole lot but you can shove these right up next to each other. So we're gonna get all these batter that I have already cut up and put on here because then what we're gonna do is put this in the freezer for probably about an hour or so until they're completely frozen. And then all you do is put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer and that's it. When you go to take them out to freeze them, I probably wouldn't lay them out and let them fall out because then that batter and then that can get stuck together. You could put them on layers of like parchment paper and shove them in there and that way you don't run the risk of them um, sticking together at any point. But if they're frozen like this and they go in a bag, they shouldn't stick together at all. When you take them out to fry them, you just drop them in hot, ready for squash oil and enjoy squash.